Hey, I'm Georgia. And I'm Emma, and we're about to go build our first pollinator garden at the Ellis Preserve as our first intern project. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> We chose to plant the garden around a tree stump in order to beautify and renew a prominent reminder of a past life. So we're almost done creating the perimeter. Yes. We've got some nice ripped up area around here. The enormous mass of roots still in the ground provide plenty of potential for new growth. Plus, listen to how satisfying they sound when pulled from the dirt. Ah. There were already so many worms, little wormy, grubs, you can see more little roly polies, bacteria, and fungi already inhabiting the decaying stump. So these decomposers will speed up the process of turning this dead tree into usable organic matter. After getting our hands dirty digging up the plot for our garden, we took some time to make sure the flowers we planted would be pollinator friendly. Climate change, diseases, and pesticide use have caused habitat loss for many pollinators such as bees and butterflies. So in making a pollinator garden, our primary goal was to reinstate some of that lost habitat and to increase our local populations. It may seem like a small garden to us, but to them it's an oasis of biologically diverse pollen. Not to mention how much nicer this plot of land looked when we finished. But why not decide for yourself? Planting a pollinator garden is an amazing way to connect with the earth and it was easy and fun and it felt really good knowing it was benefiting the plant. This small but mighty garden will support pollinators and in turn the ecosystem surrounding it. And it's something simple that can be done on a very small scale in your backyard or a much larger scale like we've done with this big tree stump. So if you're trying to look for something to do for your local pollinators, we highly suggest planting a pollinator garden. Mm -hmm.